Uh, good morning, grade 8 learners. Welcome to Valenzuela Life Science 8. I am Sir Albert Sagincin from Polo National High School, and I will be your virtual science teacher for today. For today's lesson, you will learn to explain the advantage of high biodiversity in maintaining the stability of an ecosystem and describe the transfer of energy through tropic levels. Specifically, you will learn to describe high biodiversity and low biodiversity. You will also construct a food chain and interpret how energy transfer takes place through the tropic levels. Here are a few reminders before we start with our discussion. First is to utilize the comment box in asking and answering questions. Second, use appropriate words when chatting in the comments. Last time, you have learned about the concept of species and how species are classified. You also found out that biodiversity is the variety of life found in Earth, and it has three levels. First one is the ecosystem diversity, second is the genetic diversity, and last one is the species diversity. The species diversity refers to the different kinds of living organisms inhabiting an ecosystem. The species diversity has two classifications. First one is the high biodiversity. Second is the low biodiversity. Before we proceed in discussing the classifications of species diversity, join me as we travel the nature of the world. Are you ready? So sit back, relax, and enjoy the amazing beauty of our planet. For our first stop is the Amazon Rainforest. It covers much of northwestern Brazil and extending into Colombia, Peru, and other South American countries, known for its biodiversity. Did you know that the Amazon rainforest is the largest tropical rainforest that covers most of the Amazon basin of South America? It has an approximately 3 million different kinds of species including plants, animals, and insects. From Amazon rainforest, let us now go to our second destination. It is known for its sand dunes located in African continent, which is the Sahara Desert, one of the driest and hottest regions. It is said to be the harshest environment of the Earth. Sahara Desert, which is located in African continent, is known to be the largest hot desert in the world. It has an approximately 800 different kinds of species. For our third destination, it is located in the Surf of the Orient, located at the Sulu Sea, known for its abundant marine biodiversity. Where do you think it is? You are correct, it is in the Philippines. The third stop is the Tubatari South here in the Philippines. Did you know that the Philippines is at the center of the coral triangle? That is why Philippines is known to be the center of marine biodiversity. There is an approximate 7,000 different kinds of species including invertebrates, coral, reef fishes, marine, mammals, and reptiles are found in the coral triangle. For our last stop, and known as the world's highest, driest, windiest, coldest, and iciest continent, it has negative 10 degrees Celsius to negative 30 degrees Celsius temperature, which is the Antarctica. Antarctica is the southernmost continent and covers the Earth's south pole, has ice-covered landmass which is inhabited by only 235 types of animal species. From our world tour, which of our destinations could you say is rich in biodiversity? Is it A, Amazon rainforest, B, Sahara Desert, C, Tubataha Reef, D, Antarctica, E, A and C, or letter F, 
B and D. Comment your answer. Very good. Amazon rainforest and Tubatari are rich in biodiversity because it consists greater number of species inhabiting the place. Therefore, it is considered to have high species biodiversity. Having high biodiversity is a type of species diversity that consists greater number of species living in an ecosystem. Having high biodiversity means having greater amount of natural resources such as food, water, shelter, hence do organisms do not need to compete and try for resources. A greater number of species can result to genetic variation among organisms making the ecosystem stable. On the other hand, Antarctica and Sahara Desert and other temperate places are considered to have low biodiversity. That means there's a fewer number of species inhabit those places due to scarcity of natural resources. The scarcity of natural resources will result to unstable ecosystem as the species may begin to thrive and outcompete other organisms that will lead to less genetic variation. Each species has a role, and when that role is lost and threatened, the impact can cascade across other groups. For example, plants serve as producers. They provide food as source of energy for other organisms. But why energy is important for every living organism? Comment your answer. Good job. Because all organisms need energy to sustain life. That is why organisms and their environment are interdependent. A fish could not survive without smaller fishes and algae to eat. A plant could not grow without animals giving off carbon dioxide needed for photosynthesis. The transfer of energy is one of the most important factors that controls what kind of species live in an ecosystem. The series of steps that shows the transfer of energy among organisms by eating or being eaten is called as food chain. It shows the one-way flow of energy in an ecosystem. For example, the grass which is the producer is eaten by the grasshopper that serves as the primary consumer. In turn, grasshopper is eaten by the mouse that plays the role of secondary consumer. The mouse is eaten by an owl which serves as the tertiary consumer. The energy moves from one organism to another organism by eating or being eaten. The steps found in a food chain is known as trophic level. As we can see, producers make up the first trophic level while other organisms such as consumers make up the second or higher trophic level. The relationship between producers and consumers connects organisms into feeding networks based on who eats whom. Food chain can be interconnected. For example, several foods can be eaten by one consumer, or one food can be eaten by many consumers, just like in a food web, an interconnected food chain. Based on the picture, plants are being eaten by dragonfly, butterfly, and grasshopper. One food is eaten by several consumers. Meanwhile, these insects are in turn eaten by one consumer, which is the frog. And that is how food web works. To represent the amount of matter and energy present in each trophic level, scientists use ecological pyramid. Ecological pyramid is a diagram or illustration that shows the relative amount of matter and energy found each trophic level. Producers are located usually at the first trophic level while the consumers are found in the higher trophic levels. In the apex, tertiary consumers are usually found. Ecological pyramid has two types, energy pyramid and the biomass pyramid. Energy pyramid shows the amount of energy transferred to each trophic level. 
energy in food can be measured in calories or cal or kilocalories kcal because 1000 calories is equivalent to 1 kilocalories we can also use the unit of kilojoules 1 kilocalories is equivalent to 4.18 kilojoules on the other hand biomass pyramid shows the amount of potential food available for each trophic level biomass is defined as the total amount of mass that a trophic level has it can be measured using grams or kilograms because 1000 grams is equivalent to one kilogram remember that only 10 percent of energy and mass available within tropic level is transferred to organisms in the next tropic level because most of the energy are used by organisms in different processes such as photosynthesis and cellular respiration some parts of organisms are not edible such as the wood of plants and trees the seed and peel of fruits the bones and shells of animals now let us have an activity called solve it calculate how much energy is transferred to the next tropic level if the first tropic level contains 100 kilocalories of energy to solve this problem just simply multiply 100 kilocalories to 0.1 which is also equivalent to 10 percent we could get an answer of 10 kilocalories therefore the next tropic level which has the primary consumer will get 10 kilocalories energy from the first tropic level what about the secondary consumers now it's your turn how much energy will they get from the primary consumers comment your answers very good the answer is one kilocalories because 10 kilocalories multiplied by 0.1 is one kilocalories for the tertiary consumers can you calculate the amount of energy they will get from the secondary consumers comment your answers good job the answer is 0.1 kilocalories because 1 kilocalories multiplied by 0.1 is equal to 1.1 kilocalories. Next problem, how much mass is transferred to the next tropic level if the first tropic level contains 2,000 kilograms of mass? To get the answer, simply multiply 2,000 kilograms to 0.1 and the product is 200 kilograms. Now, it's your turn. Calculate the amount of mass can be transferred to the next tropic level. Comment down your answer. Amazing! The next tropic level could get a 20 kilogram of mass from the previous tropic level. What about the tertiary consumers? How much mass can they get from the secondary consumers? Comment your answers. You got it right. The answer is 2 kilograms. Now that you know the difference of high biodiversity and low biodiversity and the transfer of energy through tropic levels, let us test your knowledge with this activity. HB versus LP. Identify the type of species diversity being described in the following statement or phrases. Comment HB if it is high biodiversity. Comment LP if it is about low biodiversity. You have five seconds to answer. Are you ready? Let's begin. Number one. It consists a greater number of species. Is it HB or LB? Comment your answer. Correct. The answer is HP, high biodiversity. Number two, the ecosystem is unstable. HB or LB? Comment your answer. Very good. The answer is LB, low biodiversity. Third item, it provides ample 
or enough amount of natural resources, HV or LV? Comment down below. Good job! The answer is HB, high biodiversity. Next one, the ecosystem is stable. Is it HB or LV? Comment your answers. Amazing! The answer is HB, high biodiversity. And last number, the species might thrive and outcompete other organisms, HB or LV. Comment your answers. Great! The answer is LV, low biodiversity. For your exit pass, list down the different organisms present in your community. Classify the organisms based on its role in the food chain, whether producers, primary consumer, secondary consumer, or tertiary consumer. This can be found on page 15 of your Science 8 module. Do not forget to answer the guide questions. That's it. Thank you so much for your participation. See you all next week for another episode of Valenzuela Life Science 8. Stay safe and God bless.